Relax, the keyboard is off, the press box is closed, and the mic is just getting warmed up as the guardian of the blue paint turned writer is about to enlighten us. The show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. For this week's show, leadership, not just a word for the Flyers these days. Welcome to the Hockey Writers, Inc. Join Lance and Steele as we bring you all the latest on the Flyers. Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of the Hockey Writers Inc. I'm your host, Lance Green. And I'm your co-host, Steel Flyers. And holy smokes, Batman, we've got a good one for ya. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm all right. Oh boy. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. How about this? Leadership, not just a word for the flyers these days. And Man, I'll tell you what, Lance, uh, you, you dropped an article <laughs> this morning. I mean, it's still <laughs> dripping. It's still wet. And, man, we're we're going to dive right into it. We're not going to get into that one just yet. We, we want to get into the one that you wrote a couple of days ago. Okay. okay. And so we're going to start off with that one. And that's what we're going to talk about right here, man. Leadership, not just a word for the Flyers these days. Posted just the other day on FlyersNittyGritty.com, the Capstrap Flyers have too many mediocre center prospects. They need this bargain basement UFA for their 13th forward. Lance, talk to me about this, man. Why? We, we need to talk about this big time, right? Okay. In your first article, you suggested – an NHL proven forward and Jimmy Vesey. Talk to me, man. Fill me right. in. Right. So, um, you know, a, a lot of people didn't want to see this uh, come to fruition um, because they like certain prospects, maybe a little too much uh, in my mind uh, to, to put uh, trust in them. But <laughs> I think um, I think you have to think this way with a proven forward uh, like the one that was uh, signed recently as well, Derek Broussard. Uh, but, um, you know, my mindset when I wrote this was the Flyers, okay? They they went out, and it's not just going to be another season of, uh, you know, prospects coming up and in and out and 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 we're not we're not going through that transition period anymore um uh, that went out the window when chuck fletcher gave away a first round draft pick uh this year to <clears throat> win now in my mind and uh if you're going to do that you want to put as much um players out on the ice that are going to be able to compete and and know what you're going to get out of them, and um, you know and, and you know you don't want to rush those young forwards and and I think Chuck doing that um, has <coughs> has gone about so we don't have to the Flyers don't have to rush their young prospects but in this pick where um, where before Broussard was signed I suggested a similar player because now you look at it with Broussard. Uh, going in and, and Kevin Hayes coming in and Keith Yandel coming in, all from AV's reign with the Rangers. They all played together. Yeah. They were all yeah. veteran leaders coming in. And yeah, yeah. I thought of a player that did that too, but Jimmy Vesey was a player that played with all those guys um, that I thought would fit a little bit better. Uh, on the wing because we got a lot down the center. So Jimmy Vesey was a um, a great prospect coming out of college. Um, you know, won the Hobie Baker Award uh, for Harvard. Had an amazing years there. Um, he's since fallen on a little bit of hard time. He's now 28 years old. He stands at six foot three, 202 pounds. Um, you know, he he's. He went through and, and had an amazing collegiate career. He came up and he decided to sign with the Rangers at first. And AV was there as their coach at the time. And while he was there playing under AV, Vessi was able to score 33 goals and 22 assists for 55 points in the two seasons uh, right. that... AV was behind the bench. Now, um, since then, Vesey has been unable uh, to hit that mark uh, again. 
um, and he's struggled at times throughout later parts of his career um, since leaving the Rangers. Uh, he's he's been passed around. He was traded basically to Buffalo uh, from New York so that um, the Rangers could go out and and go after some big name free agents, which they were able to do. But uh, they they gave up on him. So he signed it with the Toronto Maple Leafs last season at the start of the season for a one year deal of nine hundred thousand dollars. And when he did that, he he didn't really click with Toronto either. Um, so they traded him. Well, actually, they bought him out, and he wound up playing end of last season with the Vancouver Canucks. Um, still didn't reach those heights that he did within AV system. But the reason that I suggested him was just the fact that he was so successful in AV system. Um, maybe coming back around, he could be that bargain basement type signing that uh, Broussard is now for us that could come in and put some points on the board, be defensively responsible yeah. and, and, you know, basically help the team out and be that 13th forward or, or 12th forward, you know, to solidify that, that bottom, you know, couple lines. Okay. I mean, so <sighs> I, I look, I know this was a couple of days ago and and I know a lot of things have changed in the last few days, um, especially, uh, you know, uh, with what's been going on as of late, which we're going to get into a lot of here in, in a little bit. Um, but so would would Jimmy have been so obviously Jimmy's more of your choice than Broussard? Well, I mean, it you gotta you gotta put in the mind what um the flyers are looking for i i don't like i said previously in this article um i i think that the centers that the flyers have signed are just um underperforming um why on earth would they bring back you know german rubistoff uh to bring back why would they need to bring back connor bunneman in that sense, uh, when you have guys like Tyson Forrester, yeah. you know, Zade Wisdom and, and Morgan Frost down there. Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I I don't see it. I don't see it. But um, that's why I said we need some some help on the wing, because naturally we're we're we turned the Flyers turned two centers into wings in, you know, Claude Giroux and Scott Lawton. Um, are we going to do that again with may, possibly Morgan Frost or developing all these other guys to be something that they're not? Why yeah, not go let's... out and get somebody get guys that, yeah. that, that are naturally that position? <laughs> that was my mindset, and I mean, it seems simple <laughs> enough, right? But uh, that that was my mindset going into this. We have a lot of depth at the center position, especially with Tanner Lozinski, and you know everybody just piled up in the depth chart of the center position. But as it as it looks with uh, Broussard and you know uh, Nate Thompson coming in, there's there's no reason that Chuck. Uh, is going to push these young prospects at center uh, into the 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 limelight right away. There's no yeah. need to now There's because no we're to, fighting yeah. for that that playoff position now, and he's he doesn't want to put his trust quite yet full time into those developmental prospects still. Um, and and in doing so, he's leaving Lehigh with an amazing team. Um, this season okay so i am glad that you said that okay because this is one of the things and you touched on this and we've talked about a lot of things in the last few shows by the way this is our 43rd show by the way wow but i i'm, I'm glad you said that because i i want to just i want to focus on something here really brief briefly and and what Chuck Fletcher has done this offseason has brought in guys that can 
walk the walk. Yes. Guys that can carry the big stick. Guys that can be 200 foot responsible. Guys that can be, you know, when you come into Philadelphia now, your head needs to be on a swivel because there's somebody here that's going to take it off. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. And so I think what he's done is made the room, the culture, much more accountable. Okay. And makes has made it so I believe that he has given the coaching staff the best possible team that he can to put out on the ice. All right. For sure. For sure. For sure. I think he, like you kind of alluded to there, uh, brought in finally some players to fit AV's system. Before it was left, that AV was trying to. Uh, introduced this system, and beyond Sean Couturier and Kevin Hayes, nobody else wanted to play that system. They had to buy into it. They weren't that type player. But now, um, with the extreme amount of depth that he brought in as far as uh, former assistant captains and leadership into the room to help change that culture, like you were saying, um, to be those AV type players um, is is going to do just, you know, tenfold, um, you know, on the ice, I believe, this season. So now I'm going to throw a question that do you think that maybe not the player specifically? Because I think we have completely blown that particular player out of the water have we replaced niskanen now finally yes i i believe so um you know ellis is an amazing talent in his own right and i believe he's going to solidify that uh, first pairing right hand shot defenseman role and we also the flyers also backed it up in my mind as well with rest of line and coming in and being that physical presence uh, that we were lacking on a every 82 game, you know, player. And, you know, I, I think even with Yandel coming in, it, it solidifies that, that uh, defensive depth all the way through one through, you know, six um, or seven really with, you know, Moran still hanging in there as well. And on top of that, our prospects will be able to come in with your Cam Yorks or your Igor Zumalas, um, and and not have to be that guy or the guy right now. They can develop a little bit more in the AHL level. They can possibly uh, receive a call up or something uh, when somebody goes down with injury and get a taste of the NHL a little more than they did last year. And in doing so, they're they're not rushed, and and that depth is there that that is going to take you through the playoffs uh, with guys like Broussard having over what 119 yeah. games, uh, if whatever, if I'm mistaken, yeah. um, 117 playoff games to his credit. So you know that 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 nucleus is has changed. Um, with the Flyers, and it, it looks good. It looks really good. Do you feel that the Flyers have made up or compensated for the fact that they traded away their first-round draft pick this past season for this past draft? I do, and I'm a, I'm a big proponent uh, for this, like – uh, before the Flyers were doing it wrong, uh, with the Paul Holmgren error and the Bobby Clark error, um, they were trading away their first round picks and everything for oh, well gosh. past their prime <laughs> players. Rentals. Yes, rentals. And that that's all well and good if you actually have a real shot at, you know, the Stanley Cup, which, you know, it, it has, you know, a before. Few times. Picks, you know, you know, a few times. the Legion of Doom and all that. When we had some real chances, it, it does. But if you're going to give away that first round talent, I'd rather see them do it for somebody like Restalainen, who is uh, well below the age of 30, uh, still has many years uh, to play 
before he hangs up his skates and yeah, yeah. Uh, is a player that you so desperately needed that type of player in your lineup. And and you went out and paid the price for it and got it. Now, a first round draft pick, I mean, okay, we, we spent a couple of first round draft picks on, uh, you know, German Rubastoff and uh, Nolan Patricks and, you know, these type players in the past that haven't quite paid off. I mean, now, you know, are, is everyone gonna be a Provorov or, or a Sean Couturier? No, they're not, um, but, at, at this point, I think the Flyers needed that major change. Uh, and and yeah. they, they shifted out a lot um, of problems in Voracek and different stuff like that that, that didn't quite fit the, the right. system anymore. And, um, and, and change was needed. And they brought in a whole slew of other players that will, you know, be more willing and able to to help some of these young players um you know progress their own game and, and aren't so focused on themselves or just you know coming to the rink and doing them yeah yeah i'm with you you know that's the other thing too that i wanted to touch on is the fact that these young players like the cam yorks like the zumalas like the tyson foresters like the you know the Wade Allisons and 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 the Wisdoms and all the all these great players that are going to be playing in the Phantoms this year. I agree because they only got a small taste of the Phantoms last year, which and then they got a little bit. Some of them got a, a little bit of a taste of the of the Bigs towards the end of the year, right? The last couple of weeks of the season, right? But what I would like to see is <clears throat> Cam York go down and play with the Phantoms. And be that number one D and play 25 minutes a game, okay, and have whatever on the power play, play in all the situations, and work him and find out what he's going to be. Put him in those situations. Give him that opportunity. Watch him shine. When he shines after 25 or 35 games, eh, whatever. Then you bring the kid and, and, you know, sporadically you put him on the fourth line, give him, you know, 12, 11 minutes a night and see how he does. What? Right? And then oh, we've all seen how well Cam York has played. Right? We saw it last year. He got the puck on his stick and the game slowed down for him. Okay? So that's that's a few and far between player. OK, but I think what Chuck has done, and this is what I wanted to kind of touch on with this whole situation here, is he's brought in a lot of leadership type guys. He's brought in a lot of guys that can wear the A or the C for that matter. Or have before. yeah, Or have before. Right. Thin some things out, got some things taken care of, checked off a lot of boxes for the off season. For the most part, I would say, for this team to move forward because the young guys don't have to be that forced into playing a major role now. He's gotten that depth that everybody covets, like what Tampa Bay got. They lost their depth in this offseason, right? So the last two years, they won the Stanley Cup because they had so much depth and their depth was so good. Well, all of a sudden now their team isn't quite as deep anymore now because all those guys now have have gone to the Rangers and signed big giant contracts for eight years and seven million dollars a year or whatever. Right. Yeah. It so happens. That team, yeah. But, but you see what I'm trying to get at here. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like he's brought in these guys that are leadership guys that are, you know, uh, accountable guys that can show you how to be uh, a flyer, show you how to be a professional, do it the right way, and then let these young kids come in. Because let's face it, last year, those, those same kids, you know, which you can't even call kids anymore, because now they've been in the league two, three years now, right? But they took two steps back last year for the most part. For the most part. Okay. And look, we all know that the this all hinges on Carter Hart. 
if 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 Carter Hart is not where Carter Hart needs to be, then everything we're talking about is just <laughs> yeah. But but at the same time, uh, I, he went out. Chuck went out and addressed that as well because yeah. Martin Jones has been a a, a starter uh, in the league yeah. for quite some time. Uh, for San Jose, I mean, he did take him to a Stanley Cup final uh, and everything like that as well, and has played a lot of time and is used to playing a lot of time in net. Um, if Carter Hart can't you know, return to the player that he once was, um, you know, but I think he will. But, uh, you know, that's that's the difference there. Uh, I think, you know, Brian Elliott was uh, biting off more than he could chew uh, last season and the season before that at, at his age and everything like that. And, yeah. uh, and, and the defense wasn't great. We all know that. But that's been addressed as well. But uh, Martin Jones, I do believe, will be a more 1A option in net. And, and I think he will be willing to win more games. If you look at San Jose's defense over the past few years, it was just like the Flyers, mostly focused on offense, you know, where they took a winger in Brett Burns and made him yeah. one of their highest paid defensemen. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, right. but not everybody can be Dustin Bufflin and turn into an NHL all-star defenseman. Yeah, and and be able to play defense at the same time as being able to score goals. Yeah, uh, you. you know, so many people forget about the defense being taking care of the defense first. You know, who knows? But uh, Eric, well, Carlson, you know, your your job guy, description so. says defenseman. Yeah. yeah, so that would be like a goalie who wants to you know skate up there and be you know yeah. <laughs> doing the give and goes with the wingers. <laughs> right. Could you imagine seeing that? Like when you loved it, have you ever dreamt as a goalie of of like <laughs> breaking away? No, no, absolutely not. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I I tried. I know Ron Hextall, that's for sure. With a stick, I just tend to keep my uh, butt in the crease and uh, stop the pucks. So okay, that's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just because I have I have never put skates on, quote unquote, in anger. I've never laced them up, as they say, or anything like that. I can barely walk. So <laughs> the last thing I'm going to do is put metal blades on my feet and then go stand on some ice. So, no. <laughs> but OK, so look. This whole thing with these this whole culture change that Chuck Fletcher has done has brought in quite the group of players now to where I agree with you a lot to now where he doesn't have to worry about these young players coming in and being the number one guy right and that's the other thing too because everybody was up in arms about you know Chuck Fletcher giving away the first round draft pick and Chuck Fletcher, you know, oh my gosh. And oh my gosh. And they're getting wrist aligned. And well, he was, he played in Buffalo and his coursey numbers are disgusting and blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, let's look at some things here real quackly. First of all, he's not a number one defenseman and he was forced to play as a number one defenseman. Yes. He is not supposed to be playing 25, 26, 27 minutes a night. No, he's only supposed to be playing about 18, 19 or 20, maybe. Right. Okay. Right. So when you put somebody in a position like that, where they are not being set up for success, see, that's what I think is going to happen here. And that's why I do not have a problem with trading a completely unknown commodity in the 13th pick in the first round of the mm -hmm. NHL draft. It would be one thing if the Flyers traded away, the, if they were in the top five, right? right? If they were in the top five picks and they traded to get Ristolainen, then I would probably be calling for Chuck's head. <laughs> 
I mean, you you uh, get a top five pick in the draft and you're trading it? Smack! No, but see, that's that's where uh, Chuck is also excels at. Um, he can and and does find uh, some hot commodities in the later rounds. I mean, you look, you know, at uh, Elliot uh, Dejeuner, uh You look at uh, going to be good. You look at Wisdom. You know, and all that who was in the fourth round. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you can bet that Fletcher is finding and his his staff is finding these guys, you know, in the later rounds. So it's not as as big a deal if he trades the first round pick because you know, some teams that's all they can be successful at is uh, maybe a first or second round pick and that, and then everybody else never really pans out, but that's not true for, you know, Chuck, he, he he's, he has proven that he can find those hidden gems in the later rounds. So, well, you know, here's the thing too. First round draft picks are one in 32 Right. And even and then even then the odds are pretty stacked against them, too, where you, you get that one player that's that, you know, how often do you get the Austin Matthews? How often do you get the Connor McDavid's? How often do you get the Johnny Goudreau's? How, how once, often do they? Yeah. Yeah, once once in every, a, once that's every what I eight mean. to ten years, usually. Yeah. Uh, OK, you know what I mean? And so we're not in that cycle yet uh, yet. <laughs> you know, so we're not ready for another one of those players yet. <laughs> Shane Wright looks pretty good next year. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that too. And and there's a couple other players I feel that potentially could be special, but we'll we'll see how things we'll see how things progress. You know what I mean? I, I think I think there's a couple of players maybe that are playing out uh, in New Jersey that might might end up being pretty special. So we'll see how things go. But you know what I mean? Look. Earlier today, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine, and we were talking about the new core group of leadership on this team now. And a lot of the season boxes, of the off-season boxes, have been checked off, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's kind of what's – would you agree with that sentiment, that a lot of the off-season needs – of the Flyers have been checked off, that that Chuck Fletcher has addressed those glaring uh, drop of bricks in your lap kind of. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, he went out and um, got a uh, first-line scoring winger in Cam Atkinson. Yes. Uh, he's got uh, center depth with Broussard and Thompson now in. Yes. Um, he's got a physical defenseman in Restalinen. He he checked off the box uh, Ryan Ellis with Ryan Ellis um, for that first pairing right hand shot defenseman. He uh, in my mind got a one A goaltender in Martin Jones um, instead of a, a career backup. The only box that I can think of that he didn't in my mind uh, check off yet is a third goaltender. Now, if you remember years prior, uh, you know, that carousel of goaltenders year when we, what, started, yeah, the Flyers started yeah. like seven different goaltenders. Eight. Eight. Um, broke broke NHL record, if uh, if I remember. That's why. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Seven was a tie, eight was a record. <laughs> right. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, that, in my mind, is the scary part there. They, they didn't really go out and get those guys. Now we have some prospects uh, signed, some that homegrown prospects that we drafted, uh, but none of them have even one game of NHL experience Okay. in my mind. Now, Alex Lyon, in my mind, is not, uh, he needed to go, and I'm happy the Flyers didn't re-sign him. Um, I think he went to Carolina, if my memory, uh, yes. yep, Uh takes me there but um uh, that is going to be the glaring hole if right yeah yeah we uh we probably would have helped pack his bags probably uh, i would have loaded them on the plane 
Um, okay, so you feel that Chuck has not addressed the third goalie situation and or the starting goalie for the Phantoms. Yes. All right. It's funny that you mentioned that because this good friend of mine that I was having this great conversation with today mentioned that there was a box that he felt was not checked off of the list as well, too. It wasn't goalies. It was it was that um, he put it uh, 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 head turning uh, forward. You know, uh, guy that makes you plan against guy that makes you have to pay attention to every time he's out on the ice. You know what I'm saying? And and they I think they address that by committee. I think so. OK, but not that one player, you know, Well, I mean, I mean to get that one player uh, you're is very hard to do. Who gives up that kind of player willingly uh, because there's so few and far between. Now, uh, don't get it twisted here. Cam has had a 40 goal year before. But it's been a couple of seasons. But let's be honest, he played for Columbus with everybody jumping ship uh, around him. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to be very interested so. to see. I'm going to be interested to see how he's going to skate with some players around him that have, have some skill and some talent. <laughs> yes, yes. Jeez. I think he's going to have a uh, epic year this season. And and really be happy once again to be playing alongside some just simply talented players with, uh, you know, Coots and everything uh, or even Kevin Hayes if he plays yeah. on the second line. So, yeah, whatever. I mean, either way you slice it, you know, speaking of uh, slicing it, uh, we're going to take a quick little break here. Um, and as we do, you're going to get a chance to uh, see a word from our great sponsor. That's right, folks. Canine Country Club Resorts. You can check them out online uh, or on Facebook, uh, www.cccresorts.com. Uh, they take care of all your daycare and spa needs. They have uh, professional groomers on site. Two locations and two pools, one indoor and one outdoor. Check them out online or on Facebook. We'll be right back right after this. Greetings. This is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and we have two very special guests. We are delighted to be joined by Tracy Musser and Nicole Howard from the Canine Country Club Resorts. Tracy and Nicole are both managers for CCC Resorts and work at the Windsor or at the club, one of two locations both in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Congratulations on your 30th year anniversary of being in business. Let me start off by saying this. Steel Flyer stands behind this company 100%. Taking, taking care of Steel Flyer's furry friend for the last two years now, and they are a one-stop shop for everything your furry friend needs. In fact, let's find out what our friends at CCC Resorts offer. Nicole, how are you today? Good, how are you? Doing great, thank you. What are some of the great boarding services that you guys offer, and what do we have to do in order to get our furry friends taken care of when we are unable to travel with them? Well, we like to bring everybody in for a tour first. That way they can see the behind the scenes. They can see where they stay. They can see where they play. And then we explain all of the fun things that we can add on to their reservation, whether it be one of our packages, either a nature walk, a ball time, or even a cuddle time. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Um, boy, it sure sounds like a resort to me. So how are you today, Tracy? I'm doing well. Thank you. Tracy, tell me, is it true that you guys have both an indoor and an outdoor pool at the Windsor location? It is true. We've got one of each, so we're able to offer year-round swimming. The indoor pool is a great option for dogs who are swimming for therapy or rehab. It's got that sloped entry so they can wade into the water. Our outdoor pool is a little bit larger, and it's uh, four, four foot deep the whole way across. Uh, and both of them are saltwater pools, so it's really easy on the dog's skin and coat. Wow, that's very awesome. So then during the summer months, you have a much deeper pool outside and then a sloped entry shallow pool indoors for the dogs. Tracy, tell the folks how we can get some pool time. Well, the first thing everyone does is come for an intro swim. Uh, we use that time to make sure the dog is comfortable in the water. We make sure they know how to get out of the pool safely. And we go over all the pool rules and etiquette with the clients as well. After that, they're able to schedule private appointments where they have the pool to themselves or they can invite friends and have a whole group swim going on. So after a dip in the pool, then it would have to be off to the groomers, right? I mean, our furry friends cannot go out looking their best. Nicole, what are some of the great services your top-notch groomers provide? Our 
groomers, uh, they specialize in full service grooms. We can do the basics, whether it be just a bath and a brush out or a blowout. Uh, or for the extra pampered pooches, we can do nail dremels, we can do uh, deodorizing soaks, and also facials. <laughs> wow, man, that sounds like a resort if you ask me. <laughs> Tracy, I know one of the main programs uh, here at CCC Resorts is the WAGS program. The Steel Flyers dog is enrolled in this program. So why don't you tell the folks what is involved in this and how they can get enrolled? Yeah, the WAGS program is our primary daycare option at the Windsor. Uh, it's designed to be a structured program for people who are looking for a set routine for their dog. They all come on the same days each week, which allows uh, them to have set friends and we know exactly what's going on with each group. So we do a little bit more activities and we build more into their, their daily routine there. But we've got other daycare options as well for people looking for a little less commitment. We do an hourly care where you can drop them off and just pay by the hour. We also do a day stay option, which is great for the dogs that prefer human friends instead of making friends with other dogs. And then we have a traditional daycare option as well if you're looking for the occasional outing for your dog. Wow, there you have it. A full service groomer, a daycare program, and an indoor and outdoor pool. What more could you ask for? Sure seems like CCC Resorts has everything covered. Remember, DOG, depend on God. Welcome back to this edition of the Hockey Writers Inc. That's right, folks. We are at show 43. Wow. Holy smokes. Hey, how about that? All right. Big thank you to our sponsor, Canine Country Club Resorts. Really appreciate all the work that they do there for sponsoring us here at uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Thank you very much for that. All right, man, here we go. This is the one that we were talking about at the top of the show that we're going to get into now. This article was still dripping wet. It was released just today. And I have to tell you, A Flyers all-season signing that went unnoticed by some, but will end up paying dividends. And I have to tell you, Lance, that this article just knocks it out of the park again. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Batman. Lay it on me, brother. I mean, in this article, you speak uh, what you would most, what, what you like most about this signing. For okay. sure. All right, so on January or July 28th, 2021, uh, virtually unnoticed flyers signing of Jerry Mayhew went pretty much unnoticed because Chuck was so busy competing all these huge deals at that time that this one went pretty much unnoticed. Um, but if you know who this player is, you're, you should be pretty excited. Now, um, Mayhew was given a one-year deal, a uh, two-way type deal, that uh, just made it for $800,000. So yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty affordable, right? But um, this guy is, is a guy that uh, Chuck knows pretty well uh, from his days in Minnesota. Uh, he brought him over, yes, uh, after signing him on a original play uh, a tryout contract um, after he was at Fair State University with the Bulldogs down there. He when was he came over when he came over from Minnesota. Well, no, when, this when, is no, before. no, no. I mean, when 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 Chuck was coaching Minnesota, he brought him in. Right. Yeah. Okay. He, okay. When, when he was the GM of Minnesota, he brought him in uh, from Fair State University. Yeah. Um, okay back way back then uh, when he first was with them and he's been there for five years now in the Minnesota uh, wild system uh, he liked him so much I guess he brought him back because uh, this he was a Hobie Baker award like candidate at, at the time and he brought him in uh, and he made the team he, he outworked everybody at at the wild camps and stuff like that he's He's a diminutive guy as well. He's fi only 5'10", but uh, he's very versatile and very elusive. Um, and he, he just knows how to play, like we were saying, the whole show here. He knows how to play, and he plays the game the right way. 
Okay. He's a 200 foot player. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's a great leader. He's a guy that, um, you know, the Wild used as as a taxi squad member this past season uh, because he can come in and he, he he's virtually just slides right in when there's an injury or whatever and, and yeah. does it so uh, uneventful that they don't have to like baby him and, and stuff like that. So I think that uh, he's going to be a great player. And uh, to his credit, um, you should know this guy because in the 1920 uh, AHL season, he not only uh, led the entire AHL in goals with 39, um, he scored a total of 61 points that season, which was third best in the entire league when he played in just 49 games. All right. That, that if you do the math, was a rate of 1.24 points per game. Incredible, incredible year in the AHL. But the reason why he played so few games in the AHL that year was because he was up with the Wild. He played uh, 13 NHL games that season with the Wild. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in that same year, even though he played 13 NHL games uh, and missed out on that time playing in the AHL, he still made an NHL All-Star game that year. He still <laughs> won the league's most valuable player, Jeez. even though he didn't even play 13 games, games. Yeah, yeah. for them. All right? That's that's how great this guy was in the uh, 1920 season. Wow. But then last season, he he pretty much Taxi was spot. on par uh, was on par with that again. Now, uh, again, he was with the taxi squad for Minnesota, so he, he spent a lot of time in limbo there. But uh, he played in 19 AHL games last season uh, for just shy of a point-per-game average. He, he scored 18 points in 19 games. Um, that's a lot of time that he didn't get a chance to play because he was just practicing with Minnesota. Yeah, but yeah. he also played last season – um, with Minnesota as well for four games last season uh, on the shortened season. So this is a guy that not only comes in every night and works hard, um, but he 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 comes in and is able to fill that role when needed. He knows yeah. that he's, he's that versatile guy that can predominantly is going to be playing in the AHL, and he will be doing the same for the Phantoms. Yeah. Um, which is fine because he's down there to teach these young guys the right way, yeah. just like his coaches now, Ian LaPerriere and Jason, and Jason Smith, Smith. Yeah. who we talked about before, who played the game the right way themselves. Yeah. This is just another signing to add depth, like we've been talking about this whole show. Yeah. Depth and leadership, depth yes. and leadership, guys. And this guy is going to sit down there in the AHL and he's going to train up these youthful players and he's going to be that on ice coach that that they need from them and uh you know he's just going to have an electrifying season i think because the the phantoms are absolutely stacked with great young talent yeah. and he's just going to be a great player to have on that team and you know even though he was virtually unnoticed yeah uh, when signing here I guarantee you, you will you will see a lot of fans up in Lehigh wearing a a Mayhew jersey by the end of this year. That's how electric his game is. Uh, he loves to jump in the center of that yeah. crease and just fire him away, guys, from this far away from uh, the goalie, at, so he has no reaction time. I I love watching this player play, and it's a guy that I wish we could have uh, got last season, maybe at the trade deadline, if we were going to make the playoffs, to kind of you know fill in some holes there. Be uh, that like Tyler Pitlick type player. Yeah, be that Tyler Pitlick player. That is a great uh, great spot there for him. And, and I think he will do that this season for the Flyers if and when somebody goes down with injury, you know, yeah, and, you. and it's just that depth that Chuck Fletcher has brought in and solidified that is going to make them a playoff team once again. Let me throw a little wrench in the works here, if I, if I will. Everybody's banking on Morgan Frost here to be this whatever. 
all right? Whatever they're calling for Morgan Frost to be. And frankly, I'm having a hard time seeing it, okay? Huh. And so do you think... <laughs> Do you think that with the players, especially the last couple of players that we've talked about, that Chuck has brought in, and maybe he has the same kind of doubts? Maybe, do you think? You know, I, I think they see the talent there with uh, Morgan Frost, and, and it's undeniable he has talent. Yeah. He knows where he's supposed to be. He has great puck handling skills. Um, you know, he was a great finisher in juniors, but he hasn't done it at the NHL level yet. He yeah. came out of the same draft that Nolan Patrick did. Now, Nolan Patrick being a number two overall selection and Morgan Frost being a much later selection in the first round, they still came out of the same draft in the same round. Uh, Morgan mm. Frost, uh, to to my credit, I think the team uh, wanted to see him stick around. As they told most younger guys uh, after this season and last season as well, with the whole pandemic going on, they wanted to see him stay around. And Morgan Frost didn't do that. He went back up to Canada where, okay, his mother owns a gym up there and he's got a personal trainer. Well, that's all well and good. But I'll put it to you this way, Steele. Um if if a job if your job is comes to you and says hey look we believe in you we want you to be that uh, next big guy for us we want to groom you for a promotion uh, we want to work with you hand in hand uh, to get you to that point to get you that next level where that job would pay you millions of dollars right <laughs> uh, as as Morgan Frost has the ability to, to achieve um would would you basically go out and say nah i'll go do my own thing yeah. i got this i'll go do my own thing or would you stick around and work hand in hand with them so that they can help you achieve the goals that they want you to achieve so that they will promote you to that and and groom you to be that player that they know you can be you know it's funny that you mentioned that okay because this is how life comes around. This is how things work. Okay. In life, when you get a job and, and you're faced with the same situation, it might not be a hockey. You might not be playing hockey. Right? You you might be sitting at a desk somewhere, you know, or or you might be in a cube somewhere, or you, you know, you you might be on phones or you, you, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Do you know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is, is that you got to be the best that you can be, you know? And if you can't be that, then you got to try to do, I mean, you still have to try to be. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it, this is so, it's like, it's really fuzzy. I don't know. I guess it's just kind of fuzzy. Well, you know, you, know, uh, you go back to it, you know, everybody wants Morgan Frost to be something and they have put him up on a pedestal in my mind. And um, uh, listen, I like the kid. I think he has talent, yeah. but to date, he's only played in 22 NHL games. And last season, he only played in two games. He got hurt from a, a clean check. Now my, my thing is injuries happen. Yes, they happen. Um, but what would happen if he stayed around and worked his butt off like Joel Farabee did and put on 15 pounds of muscle in the off season? And, uh, you know, what, what effect did that happen uh, to have for Joel there? I, I think he scored 20 goals this season and led the team in, in, in goals. Gosh, I, go figure. Go yeah. figure. You know, he put in the work. He put in the work, guys. And I'm not saying that Morgan Frost isn't at home doing his own thing, working. But, you know, it, it's a little different um, for a guy to go back home when, say, hey, Giroux's been doing it for 10-plus seasons and knows what's expected of him and knows the training regiment that's going to be needed to get his body in shape and be prepared for the start yeah. of the season. Yeah. I, I don't think Morgan Frost has has done that quite yet. Okay, hey, I, I this is just a joke, but 
the guy working uh, the working at his mom's gym trying to train him up. Uh, I, I guarantee he's paying somebody else, you know, much better than that. But at the same token, it's not cutting the mustard when you could stay with Jim across in, in Philly. Uh, sure. Go home for a month or two in the off season, like most players do and, and enjoy that, that break, but yeah. come back, to, come back and get into work and, and let's, let's get to work. You're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to do something, to play a game. That's yeah. something that we would all want to do. Yeah. And you have the talent in which to achieve those goals that yeah. that you that they want you to. But but I don't see the work ethic there. And exactly. I, and I got a lot of flack from that because a lot of people have put him up on that pedestal. A lot of people think he's that golden prospect. And I think he is, too. But he needs to work at, to be that. Everything to, the, to date has been under pure skill and talent that he has. But. He needs to take it to another level because in juniors, maybe he's seen somebody, one person on that other team that's going to be an NHL player uh, at any given night. But now even the fighters, even the knuckle draggers of the league, the Ryan Reeves could go out there and and score 30 goals in juniors or, or you know, come to a, a men's league uh, game and just annihilate everybody out there. OK, this is a whole different class of players. And uh, I, I really think that that is why, as well, that it's going to give Morgan Frost that that time that he needs to play first line minutes down on the Phantoms for an entire season. And maybe if somebody gets hurt, he gets a call up, just like we were talking about with Cameron York yeah. and Igor Zubla on yeah. defense. That is going to be that role that they want to see him. They don't want to rush him into a full time role. They tried to bring him up two prior seasons now yeah. and play him even with Giroux um, yeah. before. And he wasn't able to finish. He wasn't able to net those goals. He wasn't able to put up the points that the team thought he was. Yeah. Um, so he needs to regain his confidence. He needs to go back down there and he needs to play and grow and, and get stronger. And I hope he does that. I hope he does that because, uh, you know, that would be great for the Flyers and that'd be great for him as well. Um, I caught a lot of flack this this uh, week, guys, from from these thoughts. But uh, the proof's in the pudding. Yeah. Nolan Patrick's out of the same draft and he's played in over 200 NHL games. Plus, he was injured for a full season with concussion-like syndromes and he had to have a surgery when he was first drafted. Morgan Frost hasn't had to do any of that, yeah. but he still hasn't been able to develop at the same yeah. rate. And yeah. I get that players don't develop at the same rates, guys, but uh, that's okay maybe four or five years now like it's been for Frost. Um, to If he was a fourth or a fifth round draft pick like Oscar Lindblom was, yeah. but you're a first round draft pick. I expect the turnaround to be a little quicker, quicker. for a first yeah, round yeah. draft pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right? But what, what I was trying to say earlier was when a company that you work for comes to you and says, hey, we believe in you and we want to do these things so that you can be successful, so that we can be successful, they're helping you to help them. And in the long run, it, it benefits you because, well, you get a better position, you get a higher paying job, you get, you know, whatever, whatever, right? So that's... That's exactly how I look at when a, a team comes to players and says, look, we really want you to stick around. OK, they're not asking you to do that so that they can, you know, watch over your every move. But especially during this time that we're in right now where things are so unknown. OK, I think it's better to have the players closer to home, closer to the facilities than it is to have them all, all over the bloody planet. Maybe it's just me. I, you know, Hey, I don't know. Yeah, I get it. Like I said, vacations are vacations and take a little break, but at the same token, you got to get back to work. Your job why, is job. Why, why is, uh, you know, I, I hate to bring his name up, but why has Tom Brady been able to stay around and been so good and successful over the years because he puts in the work. He puts in that work. He, he pulls in his own players, same with Peyton Manning in the offseason. He brought all his players in, 
and he worked with them on the offense, on the receivers, and the and the running backs in as well. This is what you know we need from our star prospects if we're, they're going to be those golden prospects that so many of you think that Morgan Frost is. Um, you know he can be, but going back to the fact that Chuck Fletcher gave up a first round draft pick this year. It's not he's not willing to rely this year on a guy like Morgan Frost to who has to date hasn't shown that he can be that second or third line center that mm. all of the most of the people that I've heard from this week uh saying that he can be um if he's if he's already went out and and committed to winning now. Yeah. Uh, that's why I think that, you know, Broussard came in. That's why uh, Thompson came in. That's why, you know, yeah, I no. suggested a guy like Jimmy VC to come in um, because he's committed to that now. Yeah. And he wants his players to learn from LaPerriere and Jason Smith on how to be good pros and how to learn the, the right training regiments, the right way to practice, the way to, to dietary, everything, right down to everything. Exactly. Uh, and that, that they need to do to be good pros. And that's why a guy like Mayhew has been brought in yeah. to basically stay down in, in Lehigh um, and help these guys become good pros. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, this was one of the many signings this past off season from Chuck, and I think it's been one of the most silent as well, you know, with the Mayhew signing for sure. Look, all in all, I think this team has improved. I I really feel that, that Chuck has – he's done as much as he can on his end, okay? I mean, he spent every last bloody dime, right? And now it's basically up to the players and the coaches. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he, he has spent all the money and put as best players that he possibly can for whatever money that he had to spend and put out on the ice. So yeah. now it has to be AV and it has to be them players. Well, as long with that, too, as we talked about in previous shows, don't forget that Chuck also brought in AV's right hand man as well to be an assistant coach now. So that, too, is one more um, case in point where it's going to further give AV uh, the ability to run his offense and his defense more effectively uh, with somebody that's so familiar with his system already. Before we get into the next couple of little topics here, I just want to throw one quick question here for you. If the Flyers come out of the gates in the first 25 games and are sub 500, okay? <laughs> What happens? Do you think? Do you think Chuck fires AV? And if he does, you can't obviously expect for it to be <laughs> the coach from the Phantoms to step in, right? So who would be the interim if 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 the, if the Flyers come out? And they fall flat on their face, and 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 or uh, Jones is playing more games than Carter Hart. You understand what I'm saying? And and this team just spirals down, or whatever the case is. In the first 25 games, is sub 500. Do you think that is a long enough leash for AV, or do you think that's going to be the end of his leash? No, I think there's so many new pieces to this uh, team that AV is going to get going to get at least to the trade deadline if that okay. happens. I I don't see the team uh being a sub 500 team. Uh the Metro Division is a very tough division now that <sighs> we're going back into it. Um but I I really don't think that they're going to be I see them right now as as a 4 in the Metro or or possibly a 5 in the Metro finishing the season uh yeah. as that making the playoffs. 
That's that's my predictions. Okay, I I wish I could be as optimistic. I I'm going to have to wait and see. I'm going to have to just be a wait and see guy, man. I'm I'm I've never tried to, to predict records for the Flyers or anything like that. I'm very excited about this upcoming season because of the the many additions that have come to this team and the many upgrades that I felt have been made. And I was the first to admit on previous shows that I, you know, completely and utterly threw Chuck under the bus and, you know, was completely ready to run him over and get him out of town. And I'm not exactly, you know, (laughs) ready to go, you know, put him up on a pedestal just yet. But, but I have to say that I, I was completely and utterly wrong in my assessment of what I felt that Chuck was doing. And um, I feel that this team has the potential to be a contender. That's the best thing I can say. The potential's there, right? There's a lot of ifs. If Carter Hart plays, if, you know. Everybody Trump, gels. Yeah. Everybody gels. If this, if that, blah, the, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever. There's a lot of ifs. If 85% of that comes true, then they have a shot. No, oh, I, I think they do gel. I think they do gel because uh, a lot of the players that they brought in already played together and already are very good friends and work out in the offseason together um, if you do your homework. And uh, a lot of the ones that uh, they brought in that played for AV previously uh, made it to the cup finals before uh, many moons ago. Yeah, but, but, still. Uh, yeah, yeah. but still like so they they they're proven guys. They got a lot more um, playoff experience and leadership. And like we said, I, I, I think they make the playoffs um, and, and I don't think it's just as an eight seed. I don't think they just squeak in. Um, I think they've returned to some somewhat where they are, a competitive, uh, okay. uh, you know, okay. at least I'm with four you. or five. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Um, one of the other things, too, that we need to really touch on here, too, here before we get out of here is a huge congratulations to Mr. Back Up the Brinks Truck, Sean Couturier. Holy smackers. Eight years, sixty-two million dollar extension with the Philadelphia Flyers, signed by Sean Couturier and Mr. Green. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, great, great signing. It's a seven point seven five AVV uh, or AAV rather, but um, you know it's going to be well worth it. Uh, you got to think in the coming years. Uh, after the season, Drew is done with that horrendously large contract and will not, even though I think he will be re-signed, I don't think that he will go for maybe five or six million, uh, if that. Uh, so we will see as far as that goes. They obviously can't pay Drew that much after just re-signing Couturier, but I think they just pretty much hit the nail on the head. If you go to practices uh like i have and covered you know practices and different stuff like that and really watched them who's the first person on the ice it's sean couturier who's the last or person on the off. ice right who's the last person on the ice sean couturier, couturier. Or sean, couturier. sean couturier for sure uh he is still out on the ice when yeah. everybody has came in talked to the media left uh, got a shower, everything, got unchanged, got dressed, showered up, everything. He's still out on the ice. This guy is a true professional that works on his craft. He is a true leader that deserves to be wearing the C in my mind. Um, but, you know, that's that's for another day, hopefully down the line in the next eight years, apparently. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be great. Uh, it's a it's crazy to think that uh, he's going to still be a flyer in the 29-30 season. Wow. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so... Woo! All right. Wow. I like that. So that, that is, uh, you know, your Selkie Trophy Award winner there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what uh, Boston, the type of person Boston built their uh, franchise off of uh, and, and cup-winning team. 
you know. So I, I think it's a great signing. I, I, he's well deserved, well yeah. deserved because he yeah. took a uh, less money than he should have this last contract, and uh, you know it, it's kind of paying him back at this point. Uh, I agree. I agree. And and I think this is very consummate to his level of play. And and I say that a little tongue in cheek because there's so many players out there that are making way more than Sean Couturier, but I just don't think they're worth it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, okay, yeah, you're making two and a half million dollars more than this guy is, but this guy's won a, a Selkie a, a trophy. And, and and just like you said, he's the first guy out there on the ice, and he is definitely the last guy out there on the ice. That's the kind of guy you want to build your franchise around. You know what I'm saying? So this to me, I think, I think this only happens because of the stuff that Chuck Fletcher has done in this offseason. I don't think that this happens if Chuck Fletcher hasn't done nearly what he did. Because why, in your right mind, would you want to spend the next eight years dealing with, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what? You know, so and especially with like Drew going to be probably gone the next two, three years, whatever the case is, you know what I mean? So congratulations to Sean Couturier. This is awesome sauce, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this for sure. So I think we've covered a good portion of what you wanted to talk about, and that was the leadership and the depth. And this was what Chuck Fletcher has brought in this off season we have gone completely 180 degrees from what we did last off season i think so okay a lot of the players a lot of the younger core players took two steps back this past season okay there's a lot of ifs going into this season moving forward but i believe that chuck has done everything that he possibly can to put the best possible team out on the ice. So I'm excited. I, I can't wait to see this season start. I, I, I look, every, you know, everybody's always like, Oh, you're excited about the season. Yeah. I really am excited about the season, but I'm really excited to see how Ellis is going to play, how cam is going to play, how, all these guys are going to gel together, man. I can't wait to see this. I want to see teams get frustrated and slam their sticks because they're playing the Flyers. I want to see Crosby get angry and chirping at the refs all game long because somebody's up his butt all game long. You see I want to see saying? him lose some more teeth. That's what I want Yeah, see. well, you know. I don't wish, you know, ill will on anybody, you know, but, but if, but if it had to, it would be him. I, I would take, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, my man, what do you think? Got another good one tonight, didn't we? Yeah, I yeah. think so. We covered a lot of stuff for sure. For sure. Lance, I'll tell you what, my man, um, I can't believe we are on. Bleacher reports yeah. for 40 weeks in a row. This feels like, you know, when you get a number one hit, right? And and it's on the, the charts for, you know, eh, it's on the charts for 42 weeks, right? So the number one song, the longest song on the charts, right, was like, I think, 188, right? So could you imagine being on the charts for that long? Like, really? Yeah. God, yeah. I can't believe that every time we put a show out, it goes out there. So, man, that that's so awesome. That's the huge Hockey Writers Inc. salute for that. Mucho appreciado. Lance, how can we get you? Where can we find you? And how can we read your great stuff, my man? All right. Well, guys, as always, my articles are featured on flyersnittygritty.com as well as steelflyers.com. You can uh, find all of my stuff and my post on twitter at lng b-a-s-s-i-s-t the number's 39 uh what about you still well now you can catch me on the web at steelflyers.com you can also check out the hockey writers inc show on steelflyers.com slash link slash 
Hockey Writers, Inc. That's where all the latest shows are. Be sure to check that out because you will see all the latest episodes there for sure. Um, we're also out on Spreaker, uh, which puts us out to all of the podcast universe out there. iHeart, Apple, Google, Amazon, you name it, we're out there. So check us out on all your favorite platforms. Please hit the like and subscribe, and we will catch you all on the next show of the Hockey Writers, Inc. We'll catch you the next time. Thanks, everybody. See you guys.